Thank you for watching this video. This video will show you uh, account types in chart of accounts. So I'm on uh, uh, QuickBooks uh, 2016 and so this is their home page. Uh, chart of accounts is right here. It's under company right on home page or you can also go from list. The first one is chart of accounts and also under company uh, you can see chart of accounts here. It's the same place. Chart of accounts right here. Make this bigger. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is your chart of account. This is what you have right now. Uh, and uh, uh, so I'm just going to go to this chart of accounts screen here. Okay, so these are account types in chart of accounts. Uh, I'm going to go uh, one by one. So income, expense, fixed assets, bank, loan, credit card, equity, and other account types. Okay, so first one is the income one. So by selecting income, uh, it's basically it's your income, of course. And how do you want to categorize your income in your PNL? So uh, it could be your product sales, it could be your service sales, or discounts to customer, or uh, if you have a special type of uh, uh, services or, or selling products you can itemize or categorize certain products as you like to see it okay so let's just go through one report here okay so uh, uh, Let's look at it here. Okay, so this happens to be a catering service and they have food sales, so that's their income type. So uh, uh, this is how you will see it in your income statement. So whenever you select, uh, uh, we have separate videos for adding uh, new accounts and uh, uh, coming up with the subcategory type. So this, this one will focus on defining uh, the income the account type only okay so uh, let's do this okay so right here this is your account type okay uh, income you can create uh, uh, in all kinds of income type but you don't want to create uh, all the products you want to create uh, uh, the main uh, main product type uh, so normally you won't have more than three or four income type in your income statement you don't want to make a, a you know 10 or 12 uh, income type in your income statement that'd be too long for you so the whole goal here is to fit um, all your uh, expenses and income in one page if it's more than one page then it's too long so you have to consider that one too. So make this like a, you know three or four, or if you just want one income, that's fine too. So normally, uh, uh, in in small business type, you will have uh, two or three type income. And expenses, uh, so you will have uh, expense categories. Normally, when you create uh, your uh, uh, chart of accounts, they will list all the uh, all all the expense categories. Like in here, uh, we have all the from here expenses and cost of goods sold. Expenses, they're all in here. This is the one we're talking about expenses. Uh, and uh, uh, it's basically recording uh, expenses by uh, account category. Uh, so uh, I'll close this. Okay. Uh, so you know if this one you know you need to look at it and focus on do I need uh, really need uh, uh, additional uh, expense category or I can use uh, existing uh, uh, account from uh, chart of account so this one you don't want to make it really big as I said no more than one page in your PNL uh, but if you really need it it's missing for uh, what you're trying to do then you'll just uh, create uh, add new one 
Okay, so fixed assets is your is your asset that you buy has a life, and normally you would depreciate over a certain time frame. And certain fixed assets you don't depreciate at all. Uh, but uh, like uh, vehicles and machinery, you will depreciate uh, uh, over a certain time frame. Let's say three to five years, uh, depending on the uh, type of accounting treatment you you will, you will have your uh, CPA. Uh, um, do the uh, entry okay and uh, so the fixed assets basically you'll have a fixed assets always at, at your original cost your purchase cost and then you will have a separate line for uh, uh, depreciation cumulated depreciation account and then the bank so this is where uh, you have your money uh, bank account uh, checking savings money market uh, that kind of stuff and uh, in here you should have your uh, uh, loan or credit card of account that be separate uh, and loan in here this is like a, uh, you bought you have a, a car loan or some sort of line of credit with your bank or uh, you borrowed money from certain some bank uh, or from uh, a private party and uh, uh, you, you know it's, it could be over a year uh, or could be under a year uh, so it depends uh, and then the credit card so this is where everything should go credit card uh, and then uh, whenever you have a credit card account this type then you, you can uh, enter credit card charges there's a separate screen for that so we go to here uh, you know you can enter credit card charges in here enter credit card charges under banking right here the separate screen uh, where you would enter credit card charges and also credit card uh, credit return type. I don't have anything in here, but uh, uh, so that's what it is. And equity is uh, uh, all kinds of uh, equity you may have, but in normal business you'll have your uh, opening balance equity if you have the uh, opening balance from prior business. Uh, if you don't have prior business is starting up then opening balance is always zero uh, and equity is the money you put in for your business it will be like the owner's equity depending on, uh, depending on your uh, uh, business type of course if you're sole proprietorship uh, you'll have owner's equity and if it's a partnership then you will have a little bit different but you'll have a main goal is the money you put in and money you withdraw from the business when you're making profit and other type of accounts so you have your main accounts civil so this one when you create chart of accounts you would normally have uh, already set up accounts civil so you don't want to duplicate another account civil uh, you don't need it you don't want to do it it does create uh, more hassle uh, create more problem uh, later on down the road and other current asset okay so this is like uh, uh, your prepaid expenses let's say uh, uh, you, you you paid uh, landlord uh, 12 months in advance or uh, uh, or uh, uh, you paid uh, your insurance company uh, the whole year so for 12 months so that would be your prepaid expense uh, basically the way it works is you, you know you just expense for one month and the remaining 11 months if you pay for 12 months it'll go to prepaid expense and uh, uh, employee cash advance if you have a payroll or even if you don't have a payroll and employee comes in and hey uh, uh, you know I need some money uh, I have some emergency and uh, uh, I'll pay back uh, so but I need some uh, $500 uh, uh, employee advance and so instead of expensing it to P&L uh, you want to set it up as employee advances and deduct it when you receive uh, uh, money uh, Check by check or deducting from your payroll, and all inventories. Uh, it's 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 a part of uh, current assets. If you are uh, tracking inventory, or if you are uh, even not 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 tracking inventory, if you have a periodic periodic type of inventory, uh, you'll have a separate inventory uh, account uh, different than your uh, regular inventory, and. Uh, uh, here's another one loans from your business so it's a very similar to uh, a cash advances or employee advances but if you're, if you're giving uh, uh, 
a business loan to uh, you know like somebody uh, and uh, there's a promissory note or we're gonna pay uh, uh, within certain time frame so that's where it go okay and other asset type so this one is like a goodwill it's kind of intangible assets so you bought a, a business and uh, there's a valuation you paid X dollars and but the uh, uh, there's some intangible asset you know, uh, so that's where you go. Uh, this will most likely uh, you'll get some consultation with your CPA. Um, so, in your business, when you, you buy it, it's uh, you buy certain assets and you also buy goodwill or intangible assets, it's a valuation thing. Uh, so, that's where you go. And if you have some long term notes, like over one year, uh, receivable, you know, uh, you, you gave some money you know, to. Uh, certain people and uh, said, uh, well, pay us back in uh, 36 months. That's a long term note to Cebu. That's where it's go. Other assets, other asset. So the difference between other asset and the current asset is basically it's a turnover thing. It's, it's, this is within one year, and the other one is like a, uh, it's over, it's, it will stay there, certain, certain things. Uh, there's no turnover here. The goodwill will stay there uh, and long term. Yeah, it, it, it will pay back in a certain time frame, but it's a, more than one year. Secure deposits, uh, when you sign a lease, they may ask for secure deposits. So that's where you go. You sign like a 36 months lease or something. So that's where it should go. And accounts payable, it's basically uh, uh, when you buy uh, items uh, from your vendor, they'll give you terms. And you want to enter bill first, and uh, then you set up as uh, uh, payable. That means uh, you want to pay that bill uh, within uh, a certain time frame. And other current liabilities right here. The sales tax goes to other current liability. So other current liability is very similar, opposite of the current assets. So everything happens uh, within uh, uh, one year. So security sales tax, security deposit from retainers, from customer. When you sign a uh, contract with your customer, you may ask for, uh, well, uh, before we do this job, pay us some money in advance and we'll start working on it. So that's what it is. And the payroll taxes, when you uh, have a payroll, uh, the first thing is you deduct uh, uh, certain payroll taxes from your employees and you contribute uh, payroll taxes as an employer so that's where it go and uh, uh, within a month or so you'll uh, uh, you'll pay back to uh, IRS or state agencies okay long-term uh, liability it's like a big uh, uh, you bought a house and a building and uh, you have 30 year uh, or 15 year uh, uh, loan so that's where it go and long-term loan, uh, it's a little bit similar, but a little bit differently. Uh, it could be uh, uh, you have a business loan from like SBA type, so that's where it go. And notes payable, uh, this that could be a par private party or uh, or to uh, um, to the bank as well. So long-term liabilities, everything over one year is long-term. And so here's your cost of goods sold. Uh, so this is the cost of goods sold, and this goes to your uh, your uh, income statement. Uh, so let's look at it here. Okay, here's your cost of goods sold. Uh, so you may have uh, uh, cost of materials, cost of labor, shipping. And if you pay to uh, independent subcontracts, 1099 type. So these are all directly related expenses to generate the sales. So it has, it's, it's most, it's normally, it's, it's directly related uh, expenses uh, to generate the sales. So if you have sales, you'll have the expenses. And if you don't have sales, uh, you may not have uh, uh, these expenses. Uh, in most cases, sometimes it doesn't work that way, 
you may have a loss, you may have these expenses, but you may not have any revenue as well. So, but in most cases, uh, the definition wise, is these are direct related or variable costs and to generate these expenses. Whereas the other one, all, uh, overhead type, these are like fixed or semi-fixed and whether you have revenue or not, you'll end up paying telephone expense or, uh, or a rent type. Okay, other income and other expense, uh, it goes below your, uh, your uh, operating income. This is your net ordinary income. So if you have certain uh, other income or expenses, it'll go in here. So why would you uh, uh, use that, those two accounts? So normally it's like a one-time uh, external expenses and sometimes you also use uh, uh, provision for taxes or your federal taxes or certain fines. You want to see your operating income first and then uh, you want to see the you know, other income type like for example uh, uh, one time like let's say you saw some fixed assets uh, and you have a um, gain or loss so you, it could go under in here. So most, most, most of the time the accountant will figure out uh, if it should go uh, under uh, operating income or within uh, your overhead or income type, ordinary income. Uh, so uh, that's about it on this one. And let's just see in here uh, in the chart of accounts. Okay, as you can see here, I have all the uh, uh, type set up here, you know, the first one is bank, then other current asset, fixed assets, uh, other asset, or in current liability, equity, and income, cost of goods sold, expenses, and other expense and other income. So these like a real uh, uh, account type, that bank uh, sort of account type, and it will flow like this uh, uh, in the chart of accounts. Well, thanks for uh, uh, listening. Uh, please, uh, uh, please come back again. Uh, please subscribe uh, our uh, YouTube channels. We have uh, uh, two channels: VP Controller and New QBO. This is New QBO is for uh, QuickBooks Online only. And like us on Facebook. 